Hello friends, this is an update video regarding my GPS tracker design while track V2. If you have not watched my previous video, the boards had been sent for assembling and I got two boards made. Uh, both of them are working fine. Since the software is already written for the Wildtrack version 1, uh, it should have been straightforward and uh, I should be able to directly port that code onto the new microcontroller and uh, it should be able to run. But the problem was that ST Microelectronics has uh, stopped providing uh, standard peripheral libraries for the new versions of microcontrollers and uh, I had to use their uh, HAL platform which is generated by their uh, CubeMX software and using this software everything is uh, done by the software itself and it generates all the initialization code and uh, it provides ready-made libraries uh, which you can use easily across different STM32 platforms. So it was not so difficult as I had expected. I was able to get the HA libraries up and running in this week and the Wildtrack version 1 software is uh, able to run on the Wildtrack version 2 and I was able to get the SMS version working wherein I send a command to the GPS tracker and it gives back the location of the uh, vehicle and one more addition in the new version of the GPS tracker is the motion sensor. I was able to detect the motion and I was able to set different threshold values for uh, the motion to be detected and uh, I am able to configure the tracker to send an SMS or generate a call whenever there is a motion detected. And the second most important addition to the Wildtrack version 2 is the battery charger which is able to take in 12 volts directly from the vehicle's battery and charge the internal battery. So the battery charger is working just perfectly fine as expected and uh, there is one slight problem which is the battery charger gets a little hot because the size of the device is quite small and I was not able to provide proper exposed ground plane for heat dissipation. So I will be making slight changes in the next version of the PCB which I am going to send for fabrication maybe uh, next week and uh, in this new version I will be providing a, a nano sim card instead of a micro sim because size of the PCB is quite small and the constraint is that I had to fit this PCB into the ready made enclosure I have. I will be changing the micro sim holder to a nano sim holder which will be saving me a lot of space and uh, I will be able to provide a better heat dissipation area for the battery charger. Even with the battery charger lit getting a little hot, uh, it's working fine and I should be able to get rid of the heat using a small heat sink but uh, maybe in the next version the thermal pad design should help us in dissipating more heat and the battery charger will stay cool over the operation. This is how the tracker is looking today. This is the GSM module, this is the GPS module, this is the USB connector which can be used to program the microcontroller and it can also be used to charge the internal battery and you can use any of your mobile chargers to charge the internal battery and this is the inductor which is used for the switch mode operation of the battery charger. This is the SOS button which can be used for sending emergency alerts using SMS and call. And on the other side of the board uh, we have the battery charger, we have the microcontroller and this is the micro sim adapter which can be used to insert micro sim and uh, also one more thing what I wanted to tell is uh, the battery charger because it's a switch mode battery charger it's working fine now but uh, because of the 12 volt input uh, it's dissipating a lot of heat and uh, the board is becoming little warm so uh, maybe in the next version I will change the micro sim adapter to a nano sim adapter and uh, it will save us some space and I can use that space to shift all these components to the right and uh, you know provide some heat sink or heat dissipation area for the battery charger. And also this is the EEPROM and the small chip is the accelerometer. And yeah, this is the 12 volt input line. These wires can be used to connect the tracker to the vehicle's battery. This is the internal battery connector wherein you can connect your GPS tracker's internal battery like this one. So this is the 14500 uh, lithium ion battery. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be of the size of uh, AA batteries. This came uh, with a specification of around 2500 mAh but actually these are all Chinese parts and the capacity is only around 500 mAh or 400 mAh like that. That's what is given on the internet. I have not tested the capacity of this battery personally but uh, they say that uh, the number what is mentioned on these batteries is actually fake. So maybe I will get a good battery uh, which fits correctly into this enclosure and maybe if you come across any good quality batteries of 14500 uh, lithium ion battery size then please suggest uh, drop me a mail or uh, drop me a suggestion in the comment section. And this is how the device is going to fit into the enclosure. So this is how the tracker will look. 12 volt input will come out and there will also be two wires to connect a ignition control relay or those lines can also be used to control a siren in case of uh, alerting the user uh, when the vehicle is moved when it is whenever it is in secure mode. So let me show you some demo on how the motion alert works and uh, how the 
uh, SMS tracking option is working. Let's wait for the tracker to initialize. So this LED turns on once the initialization is complete and the LED will start blinking at uh, every 3 second rate. So now let's test the motion detection feature of the device. Whenever I move the device or uh, there is some vibration, it should detect the motion and uh, it should send an SMS to my number indicating that the motion is detected and it will also send location or the place where the motion is detected. So this is how the device sends a message. It's, it says motion detected and it will send a link uh, to Google Maps. So once I click on that link, it will take me to Google Maps and show me where exactly the motion was detected. Since I'm indoors now, the GPS uh, coordinates are not available. Now I will show you how the SMS tracking feature of the device works. What we need to do is we need to send a command to the device. Now I have made the command to be five zeros. So once I send five zeros to the device, Uh, it should send me the current location of the device. If the current location or the GPS signal is not available, then it will send the previous known location of the device uh, whenever the GPS signal was valid. So this is how it sends the location. As the GPS signal is not available now, it has sent me the last known location. I think it will be outside my house. That's where I have been testing the device earlier. So this last known location is saved in the EEPROM so that uh, even if the device is restarted, then the location is still saved in the device and it will send the last known location. So even if you don't have an app, you can just uh, click on the link and it will open in, in a Google Maps window. So for simple tracking, you don't need to have a custom Android application. You just need to have Google Maps installed on your Android handset. This link will work on other handsets also if you have maps enabled. So this is the current location. This is the location. This is my house. It's showing correctly where I was exactly when the GPS signal is available. So this is how the SMS tracking feature and the motion detection feature work. So now let's test the motion detector again. This motion detection threshold can be programmed using some of the resistors in the accelerometer and can set it to be very sensitive and we can also configure it to detect a higher level of uh, thresholds. Maybe whenever we want to detect harsh braking or, or if you want to detect any accident happened, then we can set this threshold values to a higher value uh, and it will only trigger when that particular threshold is crossed. So that's all for the SMS demo. The device is working fine and I am able to uh, track the device using SMS tracking and uh, I have also tested the device uh, for uh, GPRS based tracking and it works quite fine. Uh, what I did is I configured the device to send HTTP packets to the server. The server I used is a Dream Factory backend. It's an open source IoT platform. You guys should check it out. And the device is sending data to the Dream Factory server at uh, one minute intervals. So that's all I wanted to show about the SMS based tracking. And maybe in my next video, I'll make a demo on how the GPRS based tracking is working and how the device is sending live data using GPRS and HTTP POST request to the server and how I am able to uh, look at all the data on my handset. In the coming month, I must be able to sell this GPS tracker on my website www.valetron.com and if you are interested in receiving more updates regarding the development of this product, subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can also subscribe to the newsletter on my blog www.ravioyp.com and you can drop me a mail at uh, ravi at the rate valetron.com and if you have any suggestions or feedback or any other questions, you can drop me a mail or you can comment in the video and I will make sure that I will get all your questions answered. Thank you for watching.